So our topic is concavity and second derivative test, and today we will put the light on finding the points of inflection, and we will discuss the concavity of the rational functions. So there is a question in front of us that is x square plus one divided by x square minus one. So the function is written in the form of in the form of uh, rational. Um, rational function so here whenever we have a rational function always we focus on the denominator in order to write our domain so that we can find out either we are going to have a discontinuity or not in the function so x square minus one not equals to zero we have to write find all the values that make my function undefined Bring the negative one on the other side we will get x square not equals to zero and on taking the square root on the both sides we will get x not equals to plus minus one so our function our our domain is all real numbers except negative one and positive one okay so next try the taking the derivative by using the quotient rule and the quotient rule says that you have gf prime minus fg prime over g <clears throat> so let's see here our g just i'm writing and breaking out my question into some parts to make you understand our g is x square minus 1 which is written in the denominator and our f is x square plus 1 which is written in the numerator so g prime is the derivative of x square which is 2x and the derivative of negative 1 is 0 and the derivative of x square plus 1 is 2x so once it is done just write the derivative using the quotient rule which says g that is x square minus 1 f prime means the 2x minus f which means x square plus 1 and g prime gives us 2x again over g square that means x square minus 1 whole square now open the brackets simplify them so 2x times x square gives us 2x to the power 3 2x times 1 gives us negative 2x now multiply don't forget this negative sign which is outside the brackets and multiply with the negative 2x here 2x and the negative there now multiply one by one so negative 2x times x square gives us negative 2x cubed and negative 2x times 1 gives us negative 2 and the denominator as it is. Now 2x cube and negative 2x cube cancelled out, cancelled out. Negative 2x, negative 2x gives us negative 4x divided by x square minus 1 whole square. So this is my first derivative of the given function now i have to take the second derivative from keeping in mind that my first derivative is negative 4 uh, 4x divided by x square minus 1 whole square so let's break it break it into two parts f which is negative 4x and the derivative of negative 4x is negative 4 and d is x square minus 1 whole square in order to take the derivative use the chain rule so outer function bring the power in the shoulder write the bracket bracket term as it is from the power we minus 1 so 2 minus 1 gives us 1 we don't write 1 as a power and the derivative of inner function x square minus 1 which is 2x now before writing in the fair part you just simplify it so 2x times 2 gives us 4x and then x square minus 1 so we will write g prime as 4x x square minus 1 
even you can open it to make your life more easier so you will get 4x cubed minus 4 now come to the other side and apply the formula gf prime minus fg prime over g square this is the formula for the quotient rule f over g so f double prime of x equals to equals to here this is my f and this is my g so my g my g is x square minus 1 whole square f prime is negative 4 minus f that is negative 4x and g prime is here after simplification 4x cube minus 4 divided by g square that means x square minus 1 is square to the power is square now first of all see what we can do over here power to the power we multiply that means in the denominator we will get x square minus 1 whole to the power 4 now you can focus here this is x square minus 1 whole power square normally what do what does what the students do that they just take the negative 4 and multiply with the inner bracket whereas whenever there is a square as a power you always have to use a minus b whole square formula the square of the binomials which will give us a square minus 2ab plus b square now in your case it is x square minus 1 whole square so your a that is x square and whole square so it will gives us x to the power 4 minus 2 a is x square and b is 1 so you will get negative 2x square plus b square that means 1 square so you will get so let's write here you will get x to the power 4 minus 2x square plus 1 and minus 4 outside now open the bracket here with the negative 4x so negative this negative is here and even you can negative times negatives gives us positive and it makes your life so easy so only now multiply this 4x with the whole thing so 4 times 4 16x to the power the power here is 1 and here 3 so you will get power 4 and then you will have plus uh, and plus minus you will get minus 16x square now after this open the bracket with this inner negative 4 so negative 4 x to the power 4 negative negative positive 4 times 2 8 x square negative 4 times 1 gives us negative 4 plus 16 x to the power 4 minus 16 x square and whole divide by x square minus 1 to the power 4 now write down the like terms and simplify them negative 4x to the power 4 and plus 16x to the power 4 so they will give you 12x to the power 4 plus 8x square minus 16x square you will get negative 8x square and then in the end you will have negative 4 divide by x square minus 1 whole to the power now from here you can take 4 as a common okay to make your life more easier so you can take 4 common you will get x to 3x to the power 4 minus 2x square and minus 1 divided by x square minus 1 whole to the power 4 so write it in the next slide and carry on now find the inflection point so if you remember in order to find the inflection point set that second derivative equals to zero the denominator will be multiplied by the zero and it will gives you zero so you will be left only with the numerator now factor them now remember before we solve this one if you just remember the previous algebraic methods that if we have for example ax square plus bx plus c 
as our quadratic equation in order to factor them we write x equals to whatever the value we get and write x equals to whatever the values we get. We get two values of the x because here the power is x. So we just divide and take the two values. Or in other words, if you factor it, you make the two factors. One time you write the x and x and then you factor whatever the factors you get it. So that you can multiply, get the C, and when you add or subtract, you get the middle term. So whenever you will have x to the power 4 plus bx square plus c. So it is also you can factor it by means of the quadratic equations factorization. How? Now here x to the power 4 can be divided into two parts. It means the first part you will get x square value. The second part you will also get the x square value. And later on you just again find out the values by squaring both sides two values and here also two values of x. So x would have in such cases the four values. It means the zeros can be determined easily with the help of the calculator. If you have the quadratic calculator, it could be divided into two x, that is x and x. So you will have two zeros, whether it is uh, imaginary or real root, we are not going in that depth. And similarly, if x to the power four, so the number of zeros or the roots will be four. And you can use this as a polynomial equation, write it in the calculator if you want to write it with the help of the calculator. And if you don't understand or if you want to understand, if you are curious to understand how we factorize such kind of equation, go to my previous videos with the name of factoring polynomial functions. Okay, so here, let's see here, here x to the power 4. So write it in the calculator and get the factors. So the first factor, write it in terms of x squared. It will give you x square equals to 1 and the second factor it is x square equals to negative 1 over 3. Now let's see here what is happening. If we take the square root on both sides we will get x equals to plus and minus 1. But we, if we factor here both sides the square root of negative 1, 1 over 3 is not possible. So here you will get no real roots. In order to find and apply the second derivative test, you can use only the real roots, not the imaginary roots. But again, go back to the previous slides. And if you remember, we wrote the domain that is not equals to plus and minus 1. So in our case, we have on one side, we have no real roots, which means we cannot solve it. They doesn't exist at all. And plus minus one, they are not the inflection points. They are the discontinuities, which means that in our case, there is no inflection point. Okay, so if there is no inflection point, but of course you y it is a rational function, so of course you will get a you will get uh, the curves. So here on the number line you write down the discontinuities. Let's see here negative one, and here we will have the positive one. <clears throat> so if you go to the calculator and select any number between negative infinity between negative infinity and negative 1, let's suppose 2 is negative 2, put it in the calculator or replace in place of second derivative. So here is our second derivative, put it here and get a number. Then choose a number between negative 1 and 1, put it in the second derivative and get a sign. Similarly, choose a number from 1 and infinity and put it in the second derivative and get a point and see what do you get. So let's suppose if I choose a number between negative infinity to negative 1, let's suppose I'm choosing negative 2, I will get 1.9. That means a positive 
answer. If I choose between negative 1, 1 and 1, let's suppose 0, I will get again a negative answer. So here I had the first interval positive, second is negative. And from 1 till infinity, if I choose, I would have a positive, positive answer. It means positive 2 tells me that I have, positive tells me that I have a concave up. And negative tells me I have a concave down. And again, positive tells me that I have a concave up. So negative 1 and 1 are actually your vertical asymptotes. So they are the discontinuities. They are not the inflection point. But of course, you have to write the concave up and concave down intervals. So concave up intervals are from negative infinity till negative 1. Union 1 till infinity means everything which has a positive sign and for concave down we will have the intervals between negative 1 till positive 1 means the double derivative is less than 0 when we have the concave down and we refer to the interval where the double derivative is greater than 0 for concave so I, I hope that you would understand that how to factor, how to uh, how to find the uh, second derivative, first derivative and second derivative, and then apply or discuss the discontinuity and how to find the discontinuities and the inflection points using the second derivative test for rational functions. So again, my suggestion is that write down as many as questions. <coughs> Uh, from your textbook or from the internet or from anywhere the different kinds of the question um, of having the rational functions and try to find the inflection points and also the discontinuities and and let's see that how much you get this idea so if you have if you want to understand uh, some different kind of the question please write me in the comment box and if uh, if you understood the concept then gives me thumbs up.